Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Forrest with Rocky Mountain School of Photography and today we are gonna take a look at calibrating the Atomos Ninja 5. The Ninja 5 is one of my favorite pieces of video gear. Uh, I bought it about a year ago and since then it has become like the number one thing that I bring with me wherever I go when I'm shooting video. It's super awesome. The problem with it is, is that it's a screen and like any other screen that we work with, whether it's our laptop or our desktop, it needs calibration in order to stay accurate. And it's one of those things that it doesn't come with the necessary bits in order to calibrate it. So that's what I wanna look at today. Now, before we dive in, I wanna take a look at what you need to calibrate the Ninja. Obviously you need the Ninja itself. You also need a calibrator. And in this case, you actually need the X-Rite i1 Display Pro from X-Rite. Super awesome calibrator. And if you don't already own a monitor calibrator, this is just a good thing to buy. So have one of these on hand. The other thing that you're gonna need is the LANC cable from Atomos, which is legitimately a tiny little USB cable that they charge $100 for. So I'm not a huge fan of the price here, but you do need this cable in order to calibrate the Ninja. Now, one quick note on the i1 Display Pro on the calibrator. If you don't already own a color calibrator and you wanna buy this one, I would actually recommend getting the i1 Filmmaker kit. This is a little bundle with the color checker card as well as the calibrator. And it basically makes the color checker card free which is really great for doing color grading and things like that down the line. So I would pick this up if you don't have a monitor calibrator yet because it can get you that free color checker or very reduced price color checker. The first step is we wanna get the software installed on our computer. And you're actually gonna wanna install the software for both the i1 Display Pro as well as the calibration software from Atomos. Now, I had a really hard time finding where this software lived. And it ended up be being that if I just Googled X-Rite and Atomos, I was able to find the right download link. The problem is the only version of the software that they have on their website is actually not compatible with my computer and I was unable to run it. It, keep, it kept running into an error that said that the software was unable to connect to the Ninja when the calibration process was over, even though it connected to the Ninja at the beginning. So it was some bugs in the software. Anyway, long story short, I reached out to Atomos and they provided me with a beta version of the software. So if you're having the same issue, I would recommend reaching out to Atomos, grabbing that beta version, and that fixed my problem immediately. So get that software installed and go ahead and open it up. Once the software is installed, a couple quick things I recommend. First is cleaning the screen on the Ninja. It's a touch screen, it's inherently gonna get a lot of fingerprints on it. And if the little i1 sensor is placed down over a big fingerprint smudge, you're gonna be interfering with the readings that you're taking. So make sure that you take some time do a quick screen clean. I recommend this Screen Mom Cleaner. It's from Amazon, super awesome. Um, everyone kind of fights over it here at the school. We all love this stuff. So we'll clean off the screen, get it super nice and sparkly. Then we're gonna take our i1 display. We're gonna plug it into our computer. We're gonna take the super expensive LANC cable from Atomos, and we're gonna plug that in our computer as well. And I'm gonna launch that Atomos calibrator software. Now, next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna get this Ninja flat, which unfortunately with the battery in it, it's kinda hard to make it flat, so I've got a nice little thing under here just to prop it up, get it close to flat as possible. We're gonna take the cover on the i1 display. This is the normal closed way of doing things. We're gonna take that cover and we're gonna flip it back so that it's open and we're gonna turn on the Ninja. So super simple, basically hooking everything up, turning on everything, getting the software launched. Now. I am running, like I said, the beta version of the software. So if you downloaded the older version, you're gonna have the same buttons, but it's gonna look a little bit different on your end than it does on my end. Once I've got all this stuff plugged in, um, I'm gonna take the other end of my LANC cable and I'm gonna plug it into the remote port on the Ninja. So basically there's one cable going from remote port into my computer, the other one going from i1 display into my computer. I've got the software launched. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the detect button and that's going to hopefully find the Ninja. In this case it did, it says name PI here. I don't know why it says PI and not uh, Ninja 5 or whatever device you have plugged in, but that's all fine. And status is idle. So we've detected our calibrator. Now we're gonna take this calibration tool and we're gonna plunk it down right on top of the screen. Now. Couple quick things on this. Number one, we made sure we cleaned our screen. Number two, you don't want any bright lights shining down on your screen during the calibration process. So give me a quick second. All right, you probably can't see me very well, but that's okay. The screen now has no bright lights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the calibrate button 
and we are going to watch as the screen displays a bunch of colors. So we can see it's running through its different color schemes here. It's going to run a bunch of grays running from like a pure black to a pure white to learn how the gray response is on the screen. And you can notice as this is running, it gives you a status in the software program of how it's doing and where it is in the process. So we're going to let this run for a couple minutes. When the calibration process is done, you're going to notice that no more colors are going to be displayed on the screen. And it's also going to say this waiting for flash write to complete, and it's going to be counting down. So that's what you want to wait for. Um, a quick explanation of what happened as this finishes is basically it displays a bunch of colors and shades of gray that the ca little calibrator reads. There's a camera inside the calibrator, and it reads those colors. And by reading those colors, it's able to compare that to what the colors actually are supposed to be and make alterations on the Ninja in order to fix it. So pretty awesome process. Let me kick the lights back on one sec. All right, so now that it's done, it gives us a little preview inside of the Atomos calibrator where you can kind of see how the colors uh, measured to how that it fixed them basically, um, what the native colors on the screen were compared to how the calibration software has corrected them. You can also see the gamma curve, basically the brightness response, as well as the gray tracking, how gray is is gray throughout the range of brightness on the monitor. Long story short, it took all those readings and it built a little uh, ICC profile essentially for this monitor. So now when you're looking at this monitor, I can remove this calibrator and flip the cover back around on it. Now when we look at this monitor, we know that the colors we see on this screen are accurate, which is super awesome. So I highly recommend this. If you are a Ninja 5 user or really any Atomos pro product user, and you are trying to judge your colors for your video project from this screen alone, definitely take the time to calibrate it. If you don't own a calibrator, you need one anyway. It's really important to calibrate your monitor. We've made a video on that. I'll, I'll link it down in the description, but it's really important to calibrate your monitor anyway. The addition of the $100 cord in order to do it, I think is a small price to pay, even though it's big price for a cord, but it's a small price to pay for what you're gaining in the ability to have accurate colors on your monitor. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever it is, leave it in the comment section down below. And lastly, hit subscribe down there or up there to stay up to date with future videos. Special thanks to Canon for sponsoring this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one.